Hi everybody, my name is Nathan Curtis, and today I'll be sharing with you my final presentation for ITP 308. Uh, so for my presentation, I decided to do a guitar case, as you can see here. Um, the main reason I chose it is because I wanted to be challenged. I was really enjoying SolidWorks, and I wanted to have uh, an actual cool final project that I would thoroughly enjoy doing. Um, and another reason why I chose the guitar case was because Dr. Kim showed us a guitar that wasn't up to par for his standards, and I wanted to do a guitar case hopefully beating the original guitar. So um, when I was making this uh, guitar case, the first thing I made was the bottom shell. To do that, I basically made this pretty complex sketch, and then I extruded it upwards, making uh, a shell shape. So then I copied and pasted this original sketch, put it on top, uh, changed a little bit of dimensions to make it smaller, and I extruded that downwards, making a shell. And this was the first piece I made, um, pretty complicated and simple at the same time. But uh, yeah, it was off to a good start. A uh, second piece I made was the felt that went inside of that shell. So to, to do that, I basically did the same thing. I um, made another sketch and extruded it upwards. Then I did an extruded cut down and I had the, the felt shell that would put inside. So I wanted to add more to this piece because um, it's a really important piece in the guitar case. So I did that by adding a neck. So basically what I, no, sorry, not a neck, a neck protector for the guitar. So I did this by making a nice sketch right here and then I extruded it outwards, making kind of a, a loaf of bread shape, if you will. Then I extruded cut downwards just to hollow it out. So here's what you get with it hollowed out. I did a few more features. I extruded upwards a rectangle here and here, and then I cut out some circles there and there. And the reason I did these two features is for another part, which I'll talk to you later on in the presentation. Um, finally, I wasn't done with the part yet. I wanted to add a little bit more protection, uh, since it was the purpose of this part is to protect the guitar. So I made a little spline, a nice little sketch, gradual incline, and I extruded that outwards, making this right here. So then finally I did two cuts, bang, bang, just to make it equal, they wanted outside the guitar case. So I did that, and voila, here we have the felt interior. Um, then when I put that inside the outer shell, it was a perfect fit. I didn't want it to be the same height because I wanted it to be a little staggered when the guitar case closed, um, but it turned out really well. So next I did the top felt, the felt on top was very easy, same shape as the bottom, just uh, not as tall, and same with the top shell as well. So these two shapes are very easy, same thing, I put it inside, here you can see the felt's a little bit smaller, and that worked out nice for when it closes. Um, so now I had the top shell with the felt, and the bottom shell with the felt. How was I going to keep them together, and have them move in the way I wanted? And the solution was the bracket assembly, which is the first sub-assembly I made. Um, so the first piece of the bracket assembly is the bracket bottom. So, to make this bracket bottom, I started with a side view, made a little sketch, and I extruded that outwards. Once I did that, I made some more sketches in the corners, and I extruded cut of those, uh, which gave me a shape like this. Um, the next thing I did was I had a little slope upwards. I did that by making a plane equal to that right there. And then I extruded that outwards, which gave me you know, a little uh, incline shape. Finally, I did two cuts. I cut out a circle, and I cut out this piece right here, um, which allowed it to rotate freely. Uh, finally got here. A few more features I did was add some holes for the screws to screw it into the shelf, and I extruded this little shape out right here just to give it some design and detail. Uh, so yeah, that's the bottom bracket. Next I did the top bracket, which is very similar to the bottom bracket. I started with the side sketch, extruded that out, then I extrude cut the middle right here. Where the bottom bracket, I extrude cut the sides, the top bracket, I got rid of the middle. This is so that when they fit together in the assembly, they're allowed to rotate together, and they fit perfectly, nice and snug. Uh, so next, yeah, here's just another view. Uh, the next thing I did was I made some sketches up there. I made some ellipse sketches. I don't want to do a fillet on these because I wanted it to be more of a you know gradual slope instead of a circular shape. So here's what it looks like uh, right there. I think it added some nice detail to it. Um, then the last uh, pieces I did, the last features, is I extrude cut it a little semicircle up there. I put this in a bit and I did some extrude cuts for some more screws. Um, and that ended up being eight features total as well. Uh, next piece I made was the bracket pin, probably the hardest shape to make. I don't even want to talk about it. It was that hard, it'll just stress me out. Uh, then the bracket screws uh, were last, which I used dozens of them in the assembly to keep everything together. But basically this, I just made a little side view and then I did a rotate. And then it ended up working out nice. So how the, oh yeah, here's the just bracket, finally. Um, one unexpected challenge is that in order for the guitar case to open and close, all three of the bracket assemblies, one, two, three, 
have to be coplanar. Uh, this is because if they're not coplanar in the same height, it wouldn't rotate properly. It, there would be differences in the, um, just in the rotation, in the dimensions. So after realizing that, I adjusted the original sketch of the guitar cases a little bit to make all three of these coplanar. And when I did that, it ended up opening and closing perfectly. Uh, oh yeah, I added some holes on the, the plane for the screws to go through that allowed the bracket assemblies to fit into the shells. Um, here's just the top view. I didn't want to put it all the way through, so I extrude cut it just halfway into the shell. Um, and here's how, oh, no, not yet. Yeah, here's how it rotates. So it ended up working out perfect, you know, just how I imagined it, pictured it. Here it is again. Um, just a nice little, the pin there allows the bracket assembly to rotate. And then after attaching the top shell to those screws, it kept it right in place and worked out very, very nicely. Uh, so the next thing I made, I wasn't done with the felt interior as I mentioned previously. I wanted to add a little box top. So to do that, I started out with the side view, extruded that out. Uh, then I added some little uh, nubs on the end, like to call things nubs. Um, finally, since it also is part of the neck support, I did another little uh, semicircle and I extrude cut of that, uh, which gave me the shape right here. Um, and this shape fit perfectly into there. Here's how it moves. Uh, I added some angle bounds uh, so it couldn't you know, overextend. And after doing that, it was a perfect little compartment for the guitar, which I think added a really, really nice touch to my final assembly, just giving it some extra you know, features. Uh, but of course, I couldn't just leave this without putting anything in it, so I added some toys, some things I thought a guitarist may have in this case. I don't know, I don't play guitar. Um, so yeah, basically I have a guitar pick, I have uh, a cigarette, uh, warning, smoking kills, and then I added some dye. The dye were actually a lot harder than I was expecting just because I had to make so many planes. But once I did that, um, the revolved cuts ended up working out well for me and I was able to do all the sides of the dye. Uh, the next assembly is the latch assembly. This keeps the guitar from opening and closing, uh, starting with the latch bottom, which was also A plus features. I started off with the front sketch, just right here, uh, and then I extruded that outwards a tiny bit. Then I did some more extrusions and extrude cuts. First thing I did was extrude the box. So it was just like a box on top of the flat bottom. Then I extrude cut it from a side view, which hollowed it out. And then finally I had another cut right here, which just took off a little bit of the top, uh, which gave me this piece right here. Um, next I wanted to add something, like something sticking out to attach it to the top of the latch. So to do that, I made a little rectangle, cut out some elliptical shapes, uh, and yeah, did that, and it gave me a nice little shape right like that. Um, worked out very well for what I had intended. Uh, then I extruded some holes, one, two, uh, and then three more extruded holes. So these three holes are for the bracket screws, which will keep it to the guitar case, and the other one is for the pin, which I'll talk about later. Uh, the next shape I made was the lash flip. This is just a piece that attaches with there to the pins. So I made a sketch, I extruded it outwards, then I did another sketch, ex uh, extrude cut of that, which made the latch flip hollow. Uh, then finally, I made a plane and I cut it out right like that just to give it some shape. Um, and so that butt wasn't just sticking out too far. Uh, then I made a few extruded cuts, one, two, three, four, or one, two, and those are for things to stick in them, which I'll show you in the final uh, animation. Next I did the latch pins. I did two pins. I, I made a cylinder shape, cut that one in, then this one's a little bit smaller, so they were able to fit together perfectly. Um, then when I put them together on the, on the latch flip, it ended up being a little bit of space on the ends, just enough space for it to fit into the uh, final latch assembly. So it worked out very nicely. Uh, next I did the bend. I call it the bend because it's bendy. Uh, I did a sketch, and then I uh, did a sweep, a circle sweep. And then I did one extrude cut down, and it ended up being the bend. So here's just a little bit of the motions that it could all go in. Uh, the bracket bottom, latch flip, bend in the pin. And the pin allows the latch flip to rotate, and then the bend is free to rotate around that hole as well. Uh, here's the top assembly. Top assembly is just basically this part. I did a front sketch, then I did two more sketches here, one on the top plane, then I made another plane. And then I did a nice little loft on that, which gave me some sticking out shape. Uh, then I did another uh, sweep cut with a sketch around the end and did that. So the reason for the sweep cut just gives it a nice little circle shape for the bend to fit through. So when it's closed together, it fits nice and snug and tight and it worked out very well. Um, finally, I did an extruded cut down here. So if you remember the part that was jutting out in the bottom uh, bracket, 
that just fits together right there. Uh, and here's a little animation just of how it opens and closes. Uh, here it is one more time. Fits down, and the bend goes up, and it fits right like that, just like a, a normal guitar case would have. Um, so next piece is the handle. The handle, um, start off with two, I call them flats, just because they're very flat, and I'd already used brackets, so I didn't know what else to use. Um, and I'll talk about those pieces right here. Uh, I had to make them differently because they fit on different parts of the guitar case. So to do that, I copied and pasted the curve of the guitar case because I wanted it to be the exact curve. Uh, then I extruded that outwards. I made some cuts just to make it a nice round band-aid shape. Uh, then I extruded out some just rectangles and put a circle between them, which gave me the flat shape, right like that. Uh, so one unexpected challenge, very hard to fix, but the handle wouldn't rotate unless these two cylinders on the flats are on the same axis, because uh, that has to be in order for the handle to rotate. So at first I was very confused, I kept doing like guess and check, trying to get it perfect, but finally what I ended up doing is I went into properties and I adjusted the sketch relative to the assembly. So I made that circle and that circle uh, basically co-radial um, on the same point of origin. So after doing that, uh, I adjusted the, uh, the vertical pieces to make it uh, parallel to that as well. And then the handle ended up fitting uh, perfectly. So then I did the holes by making two planes, one plane, two plane, and that allowed the screws to fit in almost perfectly uh, um, tangent to the, uh, the flat. So here it is again. Um, here's the holes that I did. Uh, and yeah, I made some holes in the handle and it ended up working out nice. And here's the screws, because I needed to make the two planes in order for the screws to be tangent to those. And you can see the differences between the two flats. Uh, the handle, I started off with a nice little piece like this. Then I just did some extrude cuts. I did a little um, elliptical extrude cut again. I love my elliptical extrudes. Uh, and then that gave me a nice little shape. Then I did one more extrude cut like this for the perfect for fingers to fit into. And that gave me the final handle. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to add was just a little art, um, just a little homage to one of my all-time favorite bands, the Steve Miller Band. Um, basically what I did is I added a, a picture into the assembly, and then I did a sketch over the assembly using the, the SolidWorks built-in feature. Um, I adjusted it a little bit to get Steve Miller Band and the horse, and I did uh, extrude cuts of just a tiny little bit, just enough to paint it in different colors, and it ended up looking real nice in my opinion. Uh, so some final thoughts on my assembly. Just wanted to go over the materials. Uh, I made the bottom and top shells acrylic plastic because the purpose of these two pieces is to protect the guitar in case of drop, so basically an impact. And it's a medium to high impact acrylic plastic, which is perfect. If you're gonna drop it from a few feet up, it would protect the, sh uh, the guitar on the inside. Um, next, the felt top, felt interior. I wanted the felt, since this is more of a cushion inside the shell, I made it polyurethane foam because there wasn't really a felt looking type of material. So I figured the polyurethane foam would be soft enough to protect the guitar on the impact as well. Um, I made the latch assembly and bracket assembly brass just because it's a malleable metal that would be able to fit into the shapes I wanted it to. Uh, also because brass looks nice. It's one of the better looking metals and I think fit the, the overall aesthetic of the guitar case. Um, and the handle is a Buell rubber because I wanted it to be softer, kind of like cushy on impact, it's what tires are made of. So um, it would fit the hand nicely and feel good. Uh, so some challenges is basically coordinating the dimensions of separate parts. Uh, like, as you can tell, a lot of the parts fit together perfectly, like certain radiuses of circles, um, and it was hard to uh, remember. Basically, I solved that by writing down the dimensions, which was an easy fix. But it was a lot of work. <laughs> um, another challenge, uh, like what I mentioned earlier, is getting things just to be on dimensions, just kind of overall shape. So I did that by adjusting the sketches, like I talked about with the handle. Um, and if I had more time, I would have added a guitar to it, uh, but that would have been a lot of work. But really, I'm very proud of how this presentation ended. I think the guitar case is very nice, um, and I can't really think of anything I could have added. I guess I could have added some more detail to the shapes, but um, quality over aesthetic, I guess. Um, so yeah, thank you for all listening. <laughs>